This video is brought to you by Paperlike. This year, the 12.9 inch iPad Pro is in a league of its own. Being the most powerful tablet on the planet, showcasing breakthrough XDR display technology, for the first time being different, better from its smaller brethren, the king of all tablets, if you will, yet the device that gets little love from the tech community, and the reason that I call it rightfully underrated. It is underrated because this tablet can not only be your long-lasting all-in-one servant, but in reality, the list of things that it cannot deliver becomes shorter and shorter every year. The rightfully underrated portion of my statement is a mix between software and user expectation complexity. To understand the parallel universe that this 12.9 inch iPad lives in, let's go over the most significant problems and why I chose this very model despite all of them. Problem number one is iOS 15 and the overall hype and expectations for getting a substantial OS update that can potentially take advantage of the M1. People took the plunge of purchasing this larger tablet knowing that the M1 is inside, speculating and expecting promises that were never actually made or even hinted. For example, running Final Cut Pro or other Mac OS apps or simply the iPad becoming more of a MacBook than an iPad. History repeat itself. We all remember the many years when the internet was expecting USB-C on the iPhone and 120Hz refresh rate or the 14-inch thin bezel MacBook circling around the World Wide Web for over three years now. Apple has the tendency of crushing people's dreams unwillingly because they sell products that have huge potential that cannot be unleashed. This 12.9-inch iPad Pro is no different. Problem number two is price. Even if you decide to buy the entry-level sensible choice of a 12.9-inch iPad Pro with 256 gigabyte of storage, not sure who would ever buy the 128 for that particular model, with most likely the pen and the cheaper smart keyboard folio, we're looking at a price of 1400 bucks. That's more than the iPad Air, almost twice as much as an M1 Mac Mini, and even more than the entry-level 24-inch iMac. Why would you spend that much money to get something that can allegedly do less than a fully-fledged computer? And while on the topic of the MacBook Air, this is the iPad's third prominent problem. Both devices flexing the M1 chip and having pretty much the same internals, the MacBook Air being cheaper, a real computer with a built-in full-size keyboard and trackpad, the 12.9-inch iPad Pro already looks like the evergreen ship that got stuck in the Suez Canal. Despite all those problems, this is the iPad that I chose to buy this year for five reasons. First of all, if we truly espouse the iPad and grasp the concept that this is not and will never be a Mac, there's really no real competition. Sure, iPad 15 sucks big time if you wear the traditional computer and Mac glasses. Still, if you remove them and think of it as not a computer, but rather the most powerful, most beautiful looking and displaying device, you might start to embrace it and even fall in love with it. Reason number two to go for this iPad is the screen. This is Apple's Thunderbolt display that was released exactly 10 years ago. Think of it as the XDR of the last decade. Being a creator who does a lot of videos and graphic work, I drooled over this Thunderbolt monitor for a long time. 10 years later, that display still exudes much better experience, picture and aesthetics to over 90% of the consumer displays. The new and current XDR monitor is the next thing that I dream of getting. And to get one step closer to it, my gateway is this very 12.9 inch iPad Pro. With true to life detail, with a million to one contrast ratio, HDR photo and video editing capabilities, and consumption featuring 1000 nits of sustained brightness with 1600 nits peak, P3 white color support, true tone, true blacks, and 120Hz refresh rate, or promotion as Apple calls it, these 13 inches are bliss for my eyes. Sure, one can notice the dimming areas and the glow effect, this not being OLED display, but in reality, there is no other monitor around me that I prefer to use over this 12.9 inch one. While on the topic of the screen with the iPad, there are a few things that always concern me. Fingerprints and potential damage to the screen, like this one that was most likely inflicted by either a three-year-old youngster or a little curly one-and-a-half-year-old girl at home. Of course, I can't blame my beautiful kids for wanting to play with the iPad, but I can torture myself for having removed my paper-like screen protector a few days 
prior to that. Paperlike is the sponsor of today's video and their specially formulated protector have not only served as the best guardian for all my iPad screens, but also as the ultimate drawing assistant providing fantastic sketching, drawing and writing experience similar to real paper. On the other hand, glare and fingerprints are something of the past. And I get to enjoy my screen even more because I save time by wiping it less. With each order of Paperlike, there are two Paperlike covers inside, all the application accessories and detailed instructions of making the application effortless. Thanks Paperlike for sponsoring this video. Reason number three is power, the power of the M1. iPads, especially the Pro models, have always been extremely fluid devices, but experiencing the M1 on my 13-inch MacBook Pro and now seeing it in action running the lighter iPad OS 15 makes any other tech feel sluggish and obsolete. Keep in mind that I have the 256GB model with 8GB of RAM and not the 16GB of RAM that comes in the 1 and 2TB options. To put it in perspective, this iPad has more processing power than an i9 16-inch MacBook Pro that costs almost 3 times as much. I know, I know, having this much power is like having a Pontiac Fiero with a V12 engine, but think of it this way. People that own fast cars also drive with 65 on the highway. It is the special occasions when they go to racetracks and really unleash all those horses, which is exactly the case with this M1 iPad. Reason number four is something that I call iPad Pro screen size psychology. It is a condition where one might be more productive on the larger tablet than on the smaller. I guess size does matter. All jokes aside, the 12.9 inch iPad feels more purposeful. Think of it as watching a movie at home and going to the theater. Even if you want to go to the bathroom during the projection, you most likely won't because you're there on purpose. The same is with the 12.9-inch iPad Pro. You sit on it, you don't screw around. You work, you create, you consume, and you don't use it as an oversized iPhone. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? Reason number five is choices. If you want to get the smaller iPad, you can of course get the 11-inch M1, which is a great tablet, but there are better options out there if you ask me. The 2020 11-inch iPad Pro being one of them, or the iPad Air, or even the 2018 11-inch iPad Pro. All those choices will give you almost the exact more petite pleasure at a much better price. So let's go back to the main topic and elucidate why this 12.9-inch iPad Pro is underrated. The way I see it, there are three main reasons. People tend to approach the iPad from the angle of the Mac, which is not. It's an iPad. In reality, there are very few things that most users can't do on the iPad that might push them uh, back to use a Mac. Still, besides that, if you take the red pill and embrace the iPad, you'll get to be enjoying the most powerful and the most beautiful device on the market. I don't know about you, but I tend to always try to organize and clean my Mac the best I can. You know, I keep files tidy and I use apps like Magnet or Rectangle to snap and manage windows to the left and right of my screen. Unintentionally, I put effort to try and make my Mac more like an iPad. As we see ourselves as true multitaskers, we really prefer a more focused and more balanced workflow approach. The 12.9-inch iPad is good at all aspects of our lives. The larger screen is as good for work as it is for pleasure to have fun on. Creativity is possessed by each and every one of us. The iPad to me is the number one creative piece of tech. As such, it has the potential to make even the mundane tasks like putting together a spreadsheet feel more inspiring and fun. In reality, any limitations and complaints about this device that most people have, including me, are software based. The fact that people find workarounds for every iPad shortcoming proves that this is the preferred inspirational, purposeful, and still a magical device. So this time around, I plan to use the 12.9-inch iPad Pro for everything else besides video editing and perhaps more complex graphic work, although I'll be trying to shift that as well as much as possible. This time I chose to go for the Smart Keyboard Folio instead of the Magic Keyboard, mainly because of weight savings and the fact that I can flip back the Smart Keyboard. By the way, I plan to compare the three most popular iPad keyboards soon, so if this is something you're interested in, let me know and make sure you have the bell icon activated. These were my first thoughts and impressions on this device, and as usual, you can expect a lot more iPad Pro thoughts and discoveries in the next few months 
in terms of setups, apps, tips, EDCs, and accessories. If you enjoyed this video, you might find my iPad playlist useful, particularly the 11-inch 2020 review from last year, since this will be the deal of the year if you decide to go for the smaller variant of the iPad Pro. If you have any questions, feel free to list them in the comment section below or ping me on Twitter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out.